everyone, this is the Girls and Charmers channel and I am Claire. Welcome to day three of our 12 days of crystals. So if you missed days one and two, you can pop back on the channel and watch those. If you are new here, welcome. We're going to be learning all about a different crystal all the way through until Christmas Eve. So if you love crystals, this is the place to be. Um, if you haven't already, do click the subscribe button and click the bell next door so you're notified of when my next video goes live. If you go to the drop down description below, you will find a link to my Facebook group where we have lots of live videos, full moon, new moon, ritual videos, the sub boxes are released there. We have crystal treasure events that are like all day events. Uh, we have a lot of fun over there. You can ask questions, show us pictures of your altar, great stuff. So let's get on with today's video. Today we're gonna to be talking about black obsidian. Now, wow, black obsidian. I love it. Black obsidian is actually a glass. It is volcanic glass. Um, this is not man-made. It is a natural stone, if you like. Uh, not to be confused with some of the obsidians out there, like there is the um, blue obsidian that's like a clear blue glass that's man-made. But this is the natural, real deal, came out of the earth beautiful obsidian now you can get black obsidian silver sheen obsidian rainbow obsidian and it's all to do with different amounts of gas where they happen to be growing as to what kind of obsidian you end up with so the properties are pretty similar throughout the obsidian family with just a few differences along the way um, but we're going to specifically stick with the black standard if you like obsidian although there's nothing really standard about it so as you can see it's really beautiful really reflective because it is that volcanic glass now black obsidian is incredible it is so protective but most importantly, because there are a lot of protection gemstones that we can pick and we can choose from. If you know me, if you are over in my community, then you know I favour black tourmaline greatly. I love it. But this does something black tourmaline does not do. And that is clear your auric field. So this is a really, really wonderful tool for clearing your auric field for healing auric tears and for really making sure there's no, no attachments, there's nothing stuck there, no imbalances, things that you do not want in your energy field. Um, this is what you're going to use. And it's really, really simple to use. Like I can use this double turn wand even to literally comb through my auric field. So what I would do is I would stand up with my obsidian. You can use a palm stone Palm stone's really, really good for this. You want a nice, chunky one that you can like hold securely. You don't want one that's, I don't think I have an example, but you don't want a small piece where your hand's going to go over it. You want a piece that's big enough that you can hold it and you're going to have like a full obsidian here. Or you could use a wand like this as well. Um, you could use a sphere even to go through your auric field but basically you would stand up make sure you are centered make sure you are grounded i like to smudge beforehand and then you will go in and you will comb through your auric field and you'll be able to feel if you come across any imbalances if you come across any areas that need healing then you can just move that obsidian in a clockwise circular direction to really seal up that area. It's a really, really good thing to do regularly if you are someone that is affected by your environment a lot, if you have to work in an unhealthy environment, if you have people in your life that you have to see that are not the best of people, then you definitely are going to want to get yourself some black obsidian. So clearing through the auric field, really, really, really good. Then 
carrying it with you to protect your aura you can actually do um, a specific meditation with black obsidian uh, you, you only need a small piece you can use any size but a small piece because ideally you want to carry it with you um, take your piece you can hold it and then you can literally push its energy out into your aura and create a shield from your piece of obsidian all around you so if you're more advanced in your energy work you'll know how to do that this would be the tool to use the crystal for you um, if this is something that's new for you then you might like to come over and join our group I teach all year round um, and I will be teaching this actually later in the year in a lot more detail um, but that's something you can do with this crystal just carrying it with you helps create a barrier it is very protective against psychic attack and negative energies coming at you that way so other people's emotions other people's negativity towards you it is a really really good shield for that so wearing it as a ring wearing it as a bracelet or a pendant carrying a tumble stone um i prefer if i want to use it for shielding to actually wear it as jewelry so it's on the outside whereas if you carry a tumble it's more likely to be like in your bra or in your pocket or in your bag or whatever it may be um, but by having it on the outside, you've got that energy kind of more at the forefront for yourself. So it's really, really good for that. It's great to have when you're doing any kind of psychic work, both for its protective properties, but also because it helps you to open up psychically. That is why the majority of scrying mirrors are made from black obsidian. Um, I know a lot of my group have them now because we recently, I got some really special ones in with a special sheen on. Um, but if you have a scrying mirror, this is what you ideally want it to be made out of. Those people that have trouble scrying with an ordinary mirror or a mirror they've painted black and they find that they don't have as much luck with that, look out for an obsidian one because it will really amp up that energy and help you with your practice of scrying. It's also a really, really good material to have your pendulum made out of as well because you're constantly getting that double whammy. You're getting the protective side of things along with the opening and aid psychically from this particular stone. I also like to keep it on my altar with me and I like to keep a wand like this so that I can cut um, any cords so that I can release any energies. You can actually get um, athames made of obsidian. They're really good tools to work with as well. It is a very cleansing and detoxifying crystal. So if you are planning to go on something as simple as a diet or something bigger like a detox, whether that be an emotional one, whether that be with people around you or whether that be a physical one and you're having a complete change in diet, you can pair this with appetite, for example. Really, really good to support you in that. So it's an all round brilliant, brilliant crystal or technically volcanic glass. It has a very fiery energy to it. So if you want to work with that element, this is a good crystal to work with because obviously it has been heated, it has been created by a volcano, so it holds that energy. Some people actually find that they like to use uh, this crystal to connect with different volcanoes and to do work around deities that have connections to volcanoes. So if that's something that interests you, again, black obsidian would be for you but for most people it's the auric work and the psychic work that really it comes into their own for them so with this you just can't use it enough um if you have a palm stone of it that you're going to use for your auric field just use it as like a little vacuum cleaner if you like 
you could keep that next to your bed and every night before you go to bed you just give a quick sweep through it will take you 60 seconds to do and a lot of people find it actually improves their sleep and it also improves their ability to receive messages from their guides during sleep because they have cleared off the energy and the smog from the day and even if you've smudged with something like white sage which is really really good for clearing energy if you have an auric tear or if you have something that's really stuck in your aura unless you're aware of it and you're really focusing that smoke and working in almost a ritual manner with the smoke it's not going to get rid of it completely so adding this into your energy clearing practice will be a real bonus for your spiritual work and you will feel the effects of it it's so funny how many people say to me claire can you get me some obsidian i've heard you speak about it before can you bring me back a piece and i get them it and they use it and they're like how did i ever do my spiritual work without this and they feel so much better around people that before were so triggering to them because the other person's energy was able to get through and they fixed any tears they've cleared their aura and they've got the protection that this gemstone brings so i really hope you've enjoyed day three of our 12 days of crystals i will be back tomorrow for day four have a wonderful rest of your day that's it from me blessed be